Hey everyone, welcome to another quick tip. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to calculate the area of a polygon. And this can be useful for multiple different contexts, but today I'm gonna to show you why using this area and combine that with populations allows me to see population densities. And I'm gonna use that in the context of COVID-19 and see how many cases, uh, COVID-19 cases I have for higher population densities and lower population densities. It was something I was interested in seeing. So for today, I'm gonna to start by using the the COVID-19 Spotfire DXP template, which you can find on the community. I'll put a link to this in our video description. You can uh, download the DXP right here and the attachments, and that'll pull the latest Johns, Johns Hopkins data for you on COVID-19, and we'll clean it and prep it and make it ready for use. The other thing we use is a data function that's also in our community. There's this page on useful geospatial data functions. Uh, there's all kinds of things in here, drawing uh, boundaries, finding uh, finding points and, and uh, data within certain boundaries, transforming coordinates. Um, we're going to use a very top one, which is calculating areas of polygons, and you can download this as well directly from the community, totally free. So going into the starter template for COVID-19, uh, you have different data tables here. Here I have U.S. counties, and I have the individual COVID cases and deaths for uh, U.S. counties. I also have a table that has population in here for the U.S. county. So this is actually different age bands and uh, the county names, county code, and total population. Now I need to pull in those geometries, and Spotfire has this by default in its library. Um, at the top level, you'll see a geoanalytics folder. Um, this ships with Spotfire by default, and you can go in here, and you can go into countries, and you can go down to the U.S., and I'm going to use the U.S. counties. Uh, data table, but you might have your own geometries. You could use something else if you'd like. I'm just using something pre-built into Spotfire with pre-built geometries for these counties. So I'll hit OK here, and um, this will pull it into Spotfire. Let me give it a second to load. And while this is loading, I wanted to mention the TIPCO Academy. So we have the TIPCO Academy is a new offering from TIPCO. It's got all kinds of learning content, certifications, labs, learning pathways for all the, all these different TIPCO products, Spotfire being one of them. Uh, it's typically a paid access, but for the first two weeks of June, they're running a special promotion where you can access all this content for free, as well as the labs, and try this out for yourself if you're interested. Okay, now back in Spotfire, this data table is loaded, and you can see it says geometry here, and it has all this, this U.S. county information. So this data table, let's take a look at this. Uh, I'm going to go to table here. I'll grab this U.S. counties I just pulled in. And so you can see these geometries. And I'm going to calculate the area for these polygon geometries. So I'm going to go to data and data function properties. And I'm going to register a new data function. And I'm going to import this from that area of polygons data function. Okay, here I can browse in my local uh, drive. And I have this area of polygons downloaded. I'll bring this file in. And I'll see here in the description that it says... Uh, the output is going to be a column that's going to be a area, and I need to divide by this value uh, to get it in square miles. So it's going to give me this output in square meters. If I want it in square miles, I'll divide it by that value. So let's go ahead and just do the inputs. It's only one geometry column that I need here. Um, so I'm going to hit run to bring up the parameterization. Um, I'm going to go to columns. I'm going to go to USA counties, just the geometry column. Uh, for output, I'm going to do a column on USA counties, and I'm just going to hit OK here. And now this is going to calculate. So I think in Spotfire 10.8, they've moved uh, the status down to the bottom right. So I can let this calculate for the area of each of these geometries. It'll take a few seconds here. Okay, so now that this has been calculated, I can see this area here. Now this is in square meters. Again, I want to put this in square miles, so I'm going to add a calculated column here. And I'm going to take the area and I'm going to divide it by that value that I copied from the script. And this is going to be area, and I'll just put square miles here. And I'll hit OK. And now we have the square mile area there. So now let's pull this in with my population data. So I'll go back to my data canvas and I'll go to population of US counties. And let's just go ahead and add columns. We'll do a join here. I'll go to other. I'll find this data in my data table with US counties. Uh, this has the area in it. So settings for added columns. I want to join by a unique uh, identifier. I'm just going to join by county code, which I already know is um, unique between the two. 
Um, I'm using this with the COVID case data as well. So I've already validated that. And the columns I want to bring in, I want to deselect all of these. I just want to bring in the area per square mile. That's that's all I need. And I'll do a left outer join or I'll do a left single match join and um, I'll hit OK. So this is going to now bring in in my population data area per square mile. And I can add a calculated column directly here. And I can say, um, let's go ahead and take the total population and divide that by the square miles. And I'm going to call this my population density. And I'll do it by square miles. I'll denote that this is square miles. And so now I have a population density column here. So next, I want to bring this up to my COVID data. So I have the uh, US counties uh, COVID data. And I want to add here um, columns from that population data. So I'll go to other, go to population US counties, and I'll go to settings for added columns. Again, I'm just going to match on county code and columns from new data. Let's deselect all. I'll bring in the total population just so I can have that. And I'll bring in that population density that I just uh, calculated and might as well just bring in the area uh, in square miles. So now my COVID data uh, is going to be associated with total population for each of those counties, the area per square mile and the population density. Uh, we'll do a left single match here and I'll do OK and I'll hit OK. And here we have that data in here as well. So I want to take these results and I want to visualize it. So I put on a scatter plot. I have my cases in the Y axis, my total population on the X axis. And I went ahead and sized these points by the uh, population density. So this large point here with the most cases, that's New York City, New York County, uh, New York State. So a little bit of what we expected there. But I also have these other two points, which are pretty high in cases, but smaller circles. This is Illinois, uh, Cook County, so Chicago area. And we also here have uh, Los Angeles, California. And so that's interesting that, you know, these are much more spread out uh, big cities. Um, these three points are the biggest three cities in the United States. Um, even though these are much more spread out, they're having a lot of uh, cases. So let's take this and look at some of the other counties. Um, and notice that these points stayed at the bottom, these very dense counties, very large circles. And this is Bronx and Queens and... Uh, uh, looks like Kings County, New York. So these might be actually reporting their values together with New York City since they're seeing at zero on cases. So that might be something that's going on there. Um, I see these other large circles. So that's DC and uh, that's kind of, you know, uh, midway up here. But what's interesting is there are some surrounding counties here, Ocean, New Jersey. Um, this one's a little bit higher, Providence, Rhode Island, Rhode Island. These counties are much less dense and they're reporting more cases, even though they're much less dense. So I took this a step further and I went ahead and mapped this in some different ways. So the first map here is cases by county. And we know that New York's been hot and we can see that there. We know uh, Chicago area has been hot. We have L.A. over here. Uh, we can see some things in Miami. And this is kind of how the whole country looks by just absolute uh, case counts. But population density, by using our calculated uh, data function, our area of polygons, we can see that the most dense cities are shown here. You know, you got Denver, you got Dallas, you have Houston, you have San Francisco area. So you can see all of these other more dense areas of the country by population. And we can also see cases per person. So we know that, you know, these don't necessarily always match. We're getting outbreaks over here that are large relative to the populations. We see parts of Nebraska, parts of Ohio here that have had outbreaks outside of the big city areas. And then we look again at cases per person per square mile. So how does that population density really play a role across here? And we can see the Navajo region, the Four Corners area has been uh, particularly hard hit as far as having a spread out population, but having a lot of cases. So uh, we see Yakima County in Washington here as well. Uh, so those, these are some things to pay attention to and making sure that the populations can get the healthcare resources they need, even in large counties. Uh, so area of polygons is useful for lots of contexts, especially when combined with things like population data and other uh, contextual data that you can start to uh, enrich all together and get better insights. So if you like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're going to continue doing more tips like this, and uh, we hope to see you next time. Thanks.